Using TikTok to talk to your audience is what a lot of businesses are now thinking about. And I'm delighted to say that we have somebody who is on TikTok and is producing great content, Leah Barber, to talk to us on today's Marketing Hub. Uh, I came across Leah's content on TikTok and I was really impressed. I was just really impressed to see an Irish person on there, like really producing great content. And, uh, and, and it was in my area, so like, I was learning from there as well. Um, and I was also impressed with the quality of her video production for her business. Uh, she is the owner, founder of Penny Productions, is a qualified and experienced professional videographer and motion graphics designer. And as she says herself, the creative side is all au natural. Uh, so she's been doing that for seven years now. And one day, I hope we can collaborate. So hi, Leah. Hi, Paul. Thanks for, for inviting me on. I'm very excited. Leah, great to have you on, and like just great to see, to you know to develop a bit more of a community of of, of video producers and content producers, uh, particularly in in Ireland as well, mm -hmm. um, absolutely, and abroad as well. So, uh, Leah, um, so I suppose we we'll get straight into kind of you know what your area of expertise, right? And mm -hmm. um, so. Like I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of businesses, um, and you know they're they're think they they know they have to be on social. Uh, when I mention TikTok, they're like, "What? No, oh no, I'm I'm still on Facebook." But in in your opinion, in general, why should businesses be on TikTok? I think the the reach and the way that TikTok works. Everyone talks about algorithms and stuff, but TikTok has a very unique way of of pushing out their content. I'm not sure the technical like the technicalities of it, but I do know that it does allow for so many more people to see your content because it's just the way it filters your content out to be seen. So, I think it's 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 a a kind of a there's no lose lose with TikTok. I think you produce the content, you put it out there, you have a great chance of lots of people seeing it. So why not go on TikTok? Um, especially since like a lot of people are already on Instagram and they're kind of migrating now to TikTok a little bit more because of Instagram trying to copy inverted commas are trying to kind of um do similar things to 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 what TikTok is doing because TikTok has become so far. Uh, so popular um so for me i think it's it's a, it's a why not why not go on tiktok if you're already producing content for the likes of facebook or instagram or like that why not just post it on tiktok and see um i think there's a lot of flexibility and, and trial and error there's a lot of um yeah there's just a lot of you, you can just have fun with it and and kind of test out what works and what doesn't and stuff like that so it's a it's a why not why not put your content up there kind of thing yeah, and just as a follow-on to that, I suppose, like I think, I think for people who aren't on it, right, and for businesses that aren't on it, um, they they might have a misconception about like the uh, volume of audience maybe in their target that are there. Could you could kind of speak to that, like just for people that don't know anything really about TikTok? Um. Yeah. Like what I've noticed is there are so many avenues to TikTok. Like there's what well, my avenue that I fall under, I suppose, is film talk. Everyone goes hashtag film talk. So there is a lot of, there's just a lot of niches and avenues that can sit and, and be in TikTok that TikTok, whatever magic it's kind of made of, will filter you the content that it thinks you need or thinks that you would be interested in. Now there is a lot of random stuff in between that. Um, but you find yourself, you TikTok seems to like know you better than you do for some reason. Cause I get a lot of like, there's an Irish guy that comes up on mine and he's a, like a carpenter. Oh, <laughs> I, he's on mine I as have, well. Yeah. I have no interest in, in carpentry, but every time he comes on, I'm kind of fascinated by how he like goes about like sharpening tools and refurbishing tools and making chairs. And then after I watch his video, I'm like, what am I, like, what am I doing? Yeah. So um, I think there are just a lot of niches and a lot of avenues within TikTok. I know at first 
everyone's like, oh, it's just people recreating dances and lip syncs. And it still kind of is, but it has made room for so many other niches to be able to live on the platform and and do well on the platform. So I think there's always going to be someone that's interested in your content. Yeah. There are obviously always going to be people that are not interested in your content, but the way TikTok works, and as I said, it's, it's, it's magical spice that it has in its algorithm. It seems to know where to put the content and who would be interested in it yeah. uh, and stuff like that. So, Yeah, exactly. And, and like, you know, it's because it's not just all lip syncing and, and kids dancing, yeah. right? So I think that's... And, and I think the more you post on TikTok, the more TikTok learns, okay, this is the kind of content that you're putting out regularly let's try it here let's try it there let's and see where it picks up better so i think yeah i think the more you put up the 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 more people will gravitate towards your stuff okay very good very good yeah i that 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 young irish guy i've watched a lot of his videos as well I know, I don't he's, know what, he's really good at what he does I think, so. yeah and he's very irish i don't know where he's even from actually yeah. but sounds like just, a Kerry <laughs> accent or something so uh, i think it could be yeah 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 but i don't know why i just like i'm like oh here he is again and yeah. i watched it and i'm like i have no interest in carpentry and stuff but yeah. i just find it kind of fascinating to see what he does and that he's, he uses very old school techniques yeah um, and stuff like that so it's kind of yeah. cool no, it's very, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's one of those ones. It's just you got to watch it to the end, nearly. Mm. Um, so, um, from your experience, right? And this is kind of, it's kind of layered into the last question, but uh, it's a bit more specific. What are what are the benefits you've seen from being on TikTok for your business? Um, well, you're a prime example, actually, because your first email is like, "Oh, hi, I came across you on TikTok." So. That's a perfect example. And I've actually gotten a few of those kind of emails, um, not not a huge amount, but more than that are more there than I would have had if I'd not gone onto TikTok. Um, so I've definitely had a lot of people kind of reach out over email or have come to my because on TikTok, you can only private message someone if you're both following each other. Yeah. So you don't just get random DMs, which I think is kind of good. It kind of it just because there is a lot more interaction on TikTok, I find, than Instagram. So it just allows, unless you're following them, they can't message you, but they can comment on things. So, yeah, so it, it, it's 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 gotten me a little bit of work as well. Uh, it's definitely gotten me to connect with other creators, as you said, kind of around the world, even other Irish creators um, that I have communicated a lot with now and have become kind of social media friends and supporting each other and stuff like that so i I, i've definitely i've gotten some more a a better network of creators that are in my field that understand what it is to be a videographer and a creator and stuff like that and then i've also um developed some some other networking connections like yourself and and other um other businesses here within cork or just around ireland that have gone their first email i saw your content on tiktok looks great would love to work with you kind of thing so I have seen seen the benefit there it wasn't straight away um but it it has definitely in the last month or two especially it, it really has kind of come to come to creating better networking connections some actual business and stuff like that and and yeah yeah no it like I, it, that's that's exactly what you want to hear from a business mm. because you know, I think a lot of businesses, it's it, it's it's about putting in the hard yards, though. I think, and like I've suffered from that in the past as well. I'm trying to get better on on my home platform, which is LinkedIn, but my secondary platform is now going to be TikTok as well. So <laughs> I, I just have to get I just have to get used to putting I put up stuff that people want to view more as well. Uh, so um, so to to get a following, right? So to get into the nitty gritty of it a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. To get a following and be effective on TikTok, what do uh, businesses need to do uh, posting and scheduling? And this is a two-parter because we'll talk about posting and scheduling first, and then mm-hmm. we'll talk about what works and what doesn't content-wise. So let's let's just talk about, you know, time and not time, but like, you know, how often and and what times of the day and what have you what have you learned? Mm-hmm. Um, so a word that you'd probably hear a lot is consistency. Mm -hmm. And I didn't 
see how true that word was until I kind of started TikTok. Um, because I just on a whim put up one video um, one night because I'd, I'd heard an audio. I'm a, a big gamer. Um, so I put up an audio because it was like something like, oh, you know, that new game that's coming out. You won't talk, you won't hear from me for a week or something. So I was kind of put it at the point of view of my niche of me telling my my clients I'm going to be stuck playing this game. So don't get on to me kind of thing. And it did really well. So I was kind of like, OK, I'll post another video. So it kind of started in terms of how often did I start posting? Um, I actually started posting, I think, maybe one video a day for like close to like three months. Um, now, there might have been a few days here or there that I missed. Um, but yeah, it was consistently pretty much one video a day. Uh, for the three months and it was kind of a bit of um an indoor an dopamine hit kind mm -hmm. of yeah um because I saw vid my videos doing well and I'd like to say I I fully understood why they were doing well but they they were um so I just kept posting seeing different audios doing lip syncs and stuff um and just kind of bringing in my niche and and my area of expertise into it um and people seem to really like it so I kept posting so I I went from I think when I first started posting I was at like 96 followers mm -hmm. um and in three months I got to 10,000 so okay. that was like kind of yeah. blew my mind because yeah. the fact that I'd been on Instagram for how long has it been out since what five seven years I don't know how, how many years Instagram has actually been around but in in that time I've only reached just a just over 4,000 followers which is not a, a small number by any means um but it was just the time difference that I was able to reach 10,000 followers on TikTok in three months um whereas it's been a five-year grind to get like four <laughs> four thousand yeah. on Instagram um so it's it's definitely all about consistent consistency, especially at the start. Um and it I I I try and I try and post in keep and keeping my posts under like three different pillars. And that would be um to entertain, yeah, uh, inspire and educate. So there, those are kind of the three sort of areas my my videos tend to kind of fall under um so I, I i try and people love the the entertaining videos because obviously like people love a good laugh and stuff yeah so that's definitely what draw people draws people in so i tend to do more of those and then i would I'd do an educational or inspirational video then because people are, are there kind of thing mm -hmm. um so those are kind of the three things that i i kind of i work my videos around um within my niche obviously uh -huh. um and then a big thing as well as consistency is bringing value to the person uh -huh. um and there is value in those three tiers of educate or entertaining education and inspiring um so consistency and value are probably the two kind of main things that will help i think for you to grow on any social media but definitely on tiktok yeah, yeah, that's that's brilliant. That's a, that's a really good like because because we need that rapport. It's not just all you know. You can't just be on. I'll tell you how to do this. I'll tell you how to do this. We want to mm. get people into what our characters are a little bit as well. Yeah, so that we're building a, a kind of an online relationship with them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so they get to know us a little bit more. Um, yeah, and and I definitely found and I mentioned it earlier that people comment a lot more on TikTok videos than Instagram. Instagram interactions for me anyway have been very silent observers <laughs> I like to call them where um they might see my post and in their head go oh that's cool but not like it or not comment on it and just kind of scroll by whereas I have looking at my statistics I'm always comparing my my Instagram to my TikTok because I am posting the exact same video essentially because obviously Instagram have reels hmm. on both TikTok and Instagram. So it's a very same video. So I'm always curious, like, what video will perform better on what platform? And 90% of the time, it performs much better on TikTok. There are one or a couple of, of instances where a particular video performs better on Instagram for whatever reason. But um, yeah, I do find that 
the interaction and as you said the kind of rapport between you and your followers is a lot more and I've been very lucky in that I've not had any negative um, comments or anything like that and I think another big thing as well is interacting with the people that comment on you or comment on your videos and stuff like that because you're acknowledging their comments I think is is a great buzz for them as well Um, so consistency and value and just interacting with your followers brilliant yeah that's so, so th- that's tr- that's that's it in a nutshell that's really really good advice mm-hmm. and like so you know it's for businesses that are thinking oh, i'll put up one a week or something like that it, it, it like it would that work or do you need to have just a bit more volume in the beginning and at very least i think i think you have to have more volume in the beginning because of what what way TikTok works in filtering out your content. Because although, say I posted a video today, there I might go look and see if there's any notifications and there's a video from two weeks ago that I posted that people are liking. Mm-hmm. So it it it's like, I think the way Instagram works, if you post it, that's the thing that they filter and then it stops. It doesn't get filtered out again. Whereas... TikTok seems to circulate your content all the time. So videos that I've put out weeks ago might all of a sudden start getting comments or likes or something like that because it decides, okay, this is a new person here that might like this video. So let's show them this video and they might go into your uh, account and then start looking through all your all your videos, which is kind of a trend that I see with TikTok. Um, If a person sees a particular video, then it gauges their interest and then they go to my page and like do a, a watch party of all my yeah. all my content now but I definitely think volume but not volume for the sake of volume yeah. if that makes sense yes um and it doesn't necessarily have to be like the videos that I do as you said I'd like to think that they are very high quality but that's kind of twofold for me because of my what my business does I am a videographer so I have in the back of my head, if I'm going to make my own videos, they need to be high quality because it's not only inspiring, educating and and um, entertaining. It's also showing the viewer, oh, that video looks really good. She obviously does know what she's doing. She knows how to light a scene uh-huh. um, and stuff like that. So I, I, I wouldn't say quantity for the sake of it. And I don't think it needs to be 4K quality. But I do think there needs to be a little bit of thought behind it instead of just throwing up stuff yeah. <laughs> for the sake of it. And well. I suppose because, like you know, like you do see all the trends. Like you know, there's even there's even uh, accounts you can follow that tell you what the trends mm-hmm. are. You know, this lip sync's working or this dance is working. Like, is that an avenue in for some businesses just to just to get the feel for it? I think so. That's kind of that's kind of how I started. Like I didn't do any dances, <laughs> but I did do a few lip syncs because yeah. I was able to. I heard would heard would have heard some lip syncs and gone, okay, I can put this to my niche. Like there's a trend going around, although it did better on Instagram, weirdly enough. But there's a trend going around on TikTok at the moment. I don't know if you've heard it. It's this little boy who's been interviewed about corn on the cob. <laughs> no, I haven't heard um, it it's it's the most around it's you get such entertainment out of the things that begin to trend but it's it's this boy this little boy who's been interviewed um probably local news or something and they're at some sort of fair and he's eating corn on the cob and he's like it's the first time he's ever had it and he thinks it's the best thing in the world and then another tiktoker taking the the like samples of audio of the things that he said in the interview he turned it into a song so it's all over TikTok and it's the most random thing. Um, but I was able to ter- tweak it and not tweak it, but I was able to look at it and go, okay, I can put this or gear this to my niche. Yeah. Um, because he says, I love corn. So I put, I love Sony, like Sony cameras. Cause that's, yeah, that's what I film with. Here as um, well. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and stuff like that. So it, it, I think it is an avenue in that, is a relatively simple like those the lip sync videos that I do and stuff like that and that I focus towards my niche they are quite quick to do Mm -hmm. 
um, and I have my lighting set up and stuff in the background and I have it such a way now I can do them quite quickly if yeah. I want to and I know a lot of people film stuff on their phone but I go the extra mile and I film it on one of my bigger cameras because as I said for me I'm, I want to show the quality of my work as well as entertaining mm-hmm. educating and inspiring and stuff like that um, so yes I do think um, jumping on some of the trends not for the sake of jumping on them but yeah. picking and choosing the ones that work for you and work for your business yeah i think is a way into it and then starting going okay maybe i can show some bts maybe i can show the 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 ins and outs of my business and what i do yeah. um maybe i can teach people like if you want to go and do this this is what you need to do or or inspire them i didn't have a uh i don't have a degree in videography i yeah. learned it all on the university of youtube i say <laughs> yeah same hair same hair so it's just showing people uh you you can start something no matter your background and stuff like that so yeah. um that was kind of a, a long-winded uh um and i digressed a little bit but hopefully right. that answers the question that, that's gold because like literally <laughs> people don't know about you know what how it works or anything like that yeah and and the, and and hopefully our listeners w- will get great value from that and mm-hmm. i just just before we i've got one final question for our last few questions so there's yeah. a few more um mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like does the pool guy over in the southeast of England? Yes. So holler at your boy with the, holler at your boy for the pool work. Pro, bleh, holler at your boy for the pool work is what yeah, he says at like, the end. Yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing. I I watched a lot of stuff. Like he's he's cleaning pools. He just talks about it. Yeah. Crazy views, right? Yeah. So so I think like, see people love before and afters. Yeah. They love to see extreme, extreme changes. Yeah. Like I kind of do that with. So I do kind of um, color grading. So color grading behind the scenes, I suppose, like I would have where it's raw profile. And for people that know, don't know, when you shoot in raw, your video looks very, very desaturated, almost black and white. It's so desaturated. And then showing the 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 contrast of when you color grade it compared to that is always people love that. And um, so it's kind of like that. People love yeah. to see dramatic like Change. evolutions and stuff like that for whatever reason we find it fascinating <laughs> yeah absolutely like you know so so like i think the the key to that is just for businesses say, thinking oh my business i could never but like just have a look and see see what other businesses like yours mm-hmm. are doing on tiktok to get ideas is is probably yeah. another another no idea. matter no matter what your i feel no matter what your business is mm. what your niche is there is always going to be an area of content that you can create for that um it's just about sitting down having to think about it as you said following other people that are in similar areas um and and kind of learning from them a bit which is what i do i totally look at other videographers and reels that they've created and stuff like that and and get inspired by them and stuff so um yeah yeah very good very good now um just as well, just an added on question there is, so mm-hmm. how much time, so I will split this, do, do you spend on creating content in a week? I'm glad, I'm glad you said creation instead of just <laughs> scrolling aimlessly. Um, how much time? I mean, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> it kind of it depends on my, uh, on my week. And obviously my priority is my client work and my, on my client projects. Um, but I obviously do want to still be relatively consistent um, on TikTok and stuff like that. Um, but I would say I would definitely a day, like eight hours or more, eight and a half, like eight or 16 hours to an, a day and a half. And that's just trying to be a fairly efficient with my time. Like if I were a full just content creator and social media was my business instead of I'm using social media to bring in business to yeah. do client work and do bigger projects and stuff. So that's my goal as a, as a, as I create content for my social medias rather than social media and content creation is my business. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I try not to put a huge amount of hours into it because I don't want to take away from the time that I need to do project work and stuff like that, but I do see the benefit in it. So it's trying to find that balance as best I can. Yeah. And it can kind of vary. Like I do these videos called um, 
uh, a video series that I started called Recreate a Scene with Me, where I take a a scene from either a video I've seen on on so another video I've seen from a creator on social media, a movie scene, a scene from a TV show, and I break it down in terms of the composition of the shot, and then I break down the lighting, and then I go, okay, I'm going to try and cre- recreate this as best I can with the gear that I have. And I'm going to bring you along for for the ride, essentially, and then show you the results and show you if you just break something down into smaller parts, it can be a lot more consumable and you can understand it a lot better and stuff. Um, So in, in, in that example of my recreate a scene series, that could take maybe two days to do because of the filming involved and figuring out the lighting. I write a script for that particular one um, uh, and then the editing involved in that because I show screen screen recordings of me drawing on on the scene to yeah. to show the different lighting and stuff so, so that particular kind of video can can take much longer than the say the lip sync videos and stuff so the lip sync videos are handy to do every so often because they're nice and quick yeah um and another thing with with tiktok and stuff like that um is you can reuse content so much like there i have a video that I took or video clips that I took of my friend and when I went to visit her in Barbados and I took a load of underwater kind of stuff or water sort of scenes and I have used that to death (laughs) like just thinking of different ways that I can use it um putting it into a bit of a montage showing the original video showing the edit of the original video the sound design to it the color grade to it like you can really break up your content and disperse it in so many different ways and even if i was to post the very same video again now months later um it would still get like hopefully a a few thousand views and stuff like that because it will be circulated out even to different people and and stuff like that so yeah i know i like it it, 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 as i said um it kind of depends on the time that i i I work on the projects but it does take time (laughs) yeah absolutely and like as as well i suppose like it's it's always good to think, okay, I want to make a long thing, but then could I make five short things out of that? You yeah. know, and, and, and would that work, you know? Because uh, people are looking for bite-sized chunks as well, you know, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of the time. Okay, uh, that that is, Leah, that was fantastic deep dive into, into your TikTok experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I have three questions that I always ask at the end of this new format, Marketing Hub. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, the first question is, uh, what... And I probably know what the answer is, but uh, what one marketing technique have you used in the last year or so that has been particularly effective? Uh, TikTok. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it yeah. would be TikTok for me. Um, yeah. I do do YouTube a little bit, but that's not, uh, it's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit, but definitely TikTok. Um, Instagram and TikTok are my main social medias. I'm not really on Facebook. Um I don't, I don't, get, I don't fully understand Facebook anymore, yeah. but definitely it has to be TikTok. Um, and I've been very fortunate that I have garnered the following that I have in the last few months, um, and seen the benefits of that. Not only, um, the build up, the build, the increased networking and stuff of of other creators and also potential clients. Something I didn't mention is I've also had, um. Uh, companies well-known camera companies contact me and have sent me stuff for for free yeah. <laughs> which is crazy I never re- thought I'd be a creator that people would would yeah. send stuff for free but yeah. um a very big um I'm well-known company in our industry would be Aperture mm-hmm. uh, and I've I've connected with them and and they have sent me quite a number of things as well so I've definitely definitely say TikTok is is yeah. been a huge benefit to to my business so far I'm a little jealous I'm a little jealous <laughs> yeah so I'm I jealous think... of myself and I'm yeah yeah getting the stuff yeah very good okay <laughs> and um so uh with your unique viewpoint related to content creation and particularly mm-hmm. on TikTok and other socials how do you think it's going to evolve in the next year or so. That's a very good question because I don't think video is 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 always going to be a prominent way of promoting a business. Hmm. How it changes and progresses in the next few few years, 
I, it's hard to really say because if you'd asked me that five years ago, I wouldn't have thought of TikTok was this thing mm. that would be how it's evolved into. So it's, mm. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a wait and see, I think, <laughs> and just adapting as, as it changes and, and, and progresses and stuff like that. So it's, it's hard to know exactly how it's going to, going to, to change because it's, it's moved in such a way, I think, that maybe a few years ago, as I said, people might not have realized this is the way it was going to go. I think the short form content is is going to be king for a while, um, uh, as well as like I do those lip sync videos and those short videos because they're short and snappy. Yeah. But then, as I as I said, I, I kind of bring in content as well that is a little bit longer because I have, I suppose, created a little bit of a connection with my my followers. And um, so I know that they're interested in my work. So they are going to watch the longer stuff because yeah. I've kind of built that up with them. Absolutely. So I think the, the short form, the, the portrait um, style videography is going to be quite popular, I think for a while, but I don't think that means we move away from horizontal um, horizontal videos because there is something that you, you lose in terms of storytelling when you go to portrait uh, and I think horizontal will always, always be the way the the king in terms of composition yeah. and stuff. Um, but how how it will uh, how it will change and progress over the next few years is is uh, who knows. <laughs> yeah, who knows exactly. <laughs> if I what... knew that, I'd start preparing now. But yeah. it's it. Do you know what? It'll be fun to see how it changes and how it progresses and and yeah. adapting with that. I guess. Yeah, no, definitely, I, I agree with that. Like the the move to portrait for socials, I think is it's it's here, and like mm -hmm. LinkedIn and all those are going are going to follow it as well. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely, when we go to a cinema, we don't want a portrait. We no. we want that widescreen. So um, mm -hmm. you know, so, so that, that that's I think that will remain uh, very good. And lastly, uh, what one piece of business advice that you have got in the past? has stuck with you and you still follow or try to follow? Mm. Um, that's another good question. I don't know if I've received any direct business advice that I can, that's really like stuck with me. Mm. It's more what I have learned by observing other businesses and, and working with other businesses. Um, like I, I worked with a, a business for four years before I moved and started doing this full time. And I kind of learned what not to do in a business working in that business. So um, I think I've, 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 in terms of business advice, I've learned myself by interacting with, with other businesses and, and, and noticing trends with, with certain businesses that are like, okay, we're not going to align very well here sort of thing. Um, but there are I am big on like quotes and stuff um and I can't remember exactly the quote now but um Casey Neistat I don't know if you you know yeah. of him but yeah. Casey Neistat is a very big well-known YouTuber and, and content creator and filmmaker from America uh, -huh. uh and there's a lot of things that he has said um over the years and it was my main motivation and inspiration for taking on videography and, and giving it a proper go and I think it was something like something about um taking risks and stuff like that I can't remember the quote exactly but he he said life is worth taking risks for or something and um, so there's a few different quotes that he's he said over the years that have kind of I suppose inspired me to to with business and stuff but there's no been there's there hasn't been any direct business advice yeah. Because it's, um, it's been a slow learning and looking, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Very good. exactly. And and and, that, and I and I get that with with Casey Nice says as well, like because he he pushed he pushed the boundaries of of what people thought video should be and the way he cut things and uh, it was a little a little bit more raw in what he did as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Leah, it thanks for for this chat. Like like I've learned a lot. Like that's that's part of the marketing hub, right? So basically I just go out and go, I want to learn more about this area or I'm interested mm -hmm. in this as well. And and hopefully that that will will uh will give some good value to list listeners and viewers. Mm -hmm. So before we finish, can you just uh give us a contact email and website and your website details if people want to get in contact? Yeah, um so 
My name is Leah Barber, and as Paul mentioned, I'm the owner and founder of Penny Productions. So you can find me on my website, pennyproductions.ie. And my email is leah at pennyproductions.ie. And then for my socials, TikTok and Instagram are both at pennyproductions.ie. So (laughs) try to keep it fairly simple. So, (laughs) (laughs) Um, And uh, I just quickly looked up that quote um, from Casey Neistat, and he said, "The the biggest risk is to take no risk at all. So I think that was um, a very good quote. And, <laughs> and, that, and that's great advice to finish up on. Thanks yeah. very much, Leah. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you.